My name is Sam Abraham, I'm the project lead for RASP and I'm the founder of Amrit Lab at Murdoch CUNY. My name is David Jordan, I'm a veterinary epidemiologist and professor. Antimicrobial resistance is a global public health problem affecting humans and animals. Surveillance for antimicrobial resistance tells us where and when resistance occurs in the animal population. It also tells us which drugs are involved and how much resistance is present. So traditionally, surveillance for antimicrobial resistance in animals has involved a relatively small number of animals, herds, and isolates compared to the number that are out there. Internationally, most surveillance systems at the national level look at about from 200 to 400 isolates every year from a particular animal class. But that is way too few to actually get a clear picture of what is happening. What we need to do is overcome the traditional constraint, which is the number of isolates a laboratory can process and the number of samples a laboratory can process. If we can somehow lift that, then we can change the way we do surveillance. We can actually overlay an epidemiologically sound design and address a whole lot of other questions that we can't currently assess. At Amrit Lab at Murdoch University, we brought in latest medical technology to address the issue of antimicrobial resistance. This include state-of-the-art robotics technology, genome sequencing, along with mass spectrophotometry and AI. RASP is a robotic antimicrobial susceptibility platform. It was developed as a part of a project funded by the Department of Agriculture in collaboration with Australian pork, chicken industries, along with research organisations like Murdoch University and technology providers like TCAN. The idea behind it is to find an affordable way of increasing the number of isolates and samples we can handle and to make sure we can process them in a short period of time and turn that information that we get back to the people who need to use it. In this RAS project, we brought in latest medical technology, all the way from liquid handling robotics to sequencing. Brought it all together and then road tested it using AMR as a problem and a solution. This involved our ability to integrate various technology that was already in existence in isolation and integrated it. This allow us to test large number of samples from the field and then characterize a large number of bacterial colonies and test them for a range of attributes. And one of them is antimicrobial resistance. We took a test that was performed by humans manually and then developed it on the robotics. And then what we did was we validated using large number of samples. So the test is actually accurate as if it was done by a traditional microbiologist. From the perspective of epidemiology, what we then have the ability of is having better surveillance objectives. And this means we can look particularly at the level of herds and ask what individual herds have happening with respect to resistance. That's currently not possible with most surveillance techniques. RASP allows us to go to farms and collect a meaningful group of samples for epidemiologists to design how those samples are collected across the population and then to bring those samples to the lab, process them efficiently, accurately and affordably, generate information that is relevant to those original farmers but also to the industry as a whole and to the government sector. By collecting more accurate information on the occurrence of resistance, we can then give that information to the people who are asking for it. For example, that might be public health interests, trade interests or commercial interests in the food chain. In the next five years, we can see RASP being used for a number of various applications. This could include outbreak investigation in animal sector and in food. And what we need to do, of course, is get on top of that as quick as possible. Stop the outbreak spreading and contain the economic loss and perhaps the impact on human health and animal health. By the way that RASP works, it's very quick and can be done on a large scale. It's a fabulous tool for dealing with outbreaks like these. Vaccine development, developing new drugs, and not only that, developing new diagnostic tools because now we can perform a large number of tests in a short period of time with limited resources. We can scale up surveillance and do much more meaningful surveillance, not just in AMR, but on other issues too. Maybe it's a viral illness or a, another bacterial disease. And we can do that surveillance very quickly and we can capture the data and send it to where it's needed in the shortest period of time. The quality of the data is extremely high. We have the ability to look at large numbers of animals, large number of bacterial isolates and large numbers of herds. 
So if there is a need to define the status very quickly, RASP is an excellent tool for doing it. The AMRID lab at Murdoch University is a superb facility. Under one roof, it has the high throughput robotics for handling bacterial isolates and sera. We collaborate with multiple disciplines, all the way from veterinarians to farmers, through to people who collect the samples, to microbiologists in the laboratory and the people that provide technology. David Jordan brought in his expertise as a veterinarian and epidemiologist. And this true collaboration between us is what made a RASP a success story.